This is an alarm. We are the last generation. We are the last generation. Today is Women's Day. Our hard-won rights are still being violated, and it will only get worse. Climate catastrophe means wars. Wars mean violence and rape. We cannot allow this to happen. While I am here, I am celebrating Women's Day. This is my objection. We are the last generation, and we will fight for ourselves. Mr. Chaskovsky, please explain to the voters how the activist people who are destroying the Mermaid of Warsaw and disrupting concerts at the Philharmonic can use a huge 160-square-meter city property in the very center of Warsaw for 4,000 zloty per month. Let me remind you that this is 17 Kruta Street, where rental prices for commercial spaces range from about 120 zloty per meter upwards, and the value of the premises is more than 3.5 million zloty. One should not financially finance or support such organizations that aim to destroy public property or disrupt cultural events, such as the disruption of the Philharmonic's anniversary concert. And attacking the mermaid is an absurd and stupid idea. The statue of the mermaid does not deserve to be vandalized. Now imagine that the right wing, wanting to do something positive, would destroy some objects in the process. This is absurd. No city should finance anyone who is responsible for acts of vandalism. Besides, let's consider what kind of carbon footprint must have been created to build this apartment. I think a better place for such an organization would be Finnish houses. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk and Agriculture Minister Czesław Siekierski met this morning with leaders of the protesting groups as part of the Agriculture Summit. As we hear, a compromise is still a long way off. If it's not concrete that the Prime Minister said there will be money and that we will help pull several million tons of grain off the market, if that is not concrete, then what is concrete? We got nothing here today. We will not stop the protest tests until the European Union systemically fixes agriculture. Today we have submitted some form of the Green Deal to the Prime Minister and Minister of Agriculture that is acceptable for us farmers and agriculture, but is also good for the environment. And this is the cynicism of the European Union. Farmers are disappointed with the Prime Minister's attitude. Avoidance, appeasement and domination are the methods used by Donald Tusk during the talks. I represent young farmers. After today's meeting, I'm very disappointed because nothing concrete happened. And today, unfortunately, I'll go back to my farmers in Velkopolska province with really nothing. And here I have a request to the government. Really start to act because there will be a big escalation all over Poland. Without a compromise with the government, there is no way to suspend the strikes. That's why the farmers are announcing that the protests will continue for at least a month. For March 20th, we announce a protest throughout Poland, in every municipality, in every county. From 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Poland will freeze. Children will not get to school. People will not get to work. We will not come down from the barricades. We will protest. It can be in different forms, milder or harsher. Today it can't be that from the position of Brussels we are being given deadlines for doing field work. Ladies and gentlemen, look, it's only the 9th of March, and already you can take off your jacket. One farmer fainted during a meeting with the prime minister. An ambulance arrived on the scene. He was said to be upset due to the lack of specifics from the government. A colleague fainted. An ambulance took him away. You probably saw it. I had to be here with him for a while. Now I'm going to the hospital. Even the demonstration in Warsaw and the arrival of tens of thousands of farmers from all over Poland did not affect the talks. Not only were the farmers not heard by the government on Wednesday, but their protest was brutally pacified. Now we are hearing perverse explanations that the protest was attended not by farmers, but by hooligans. Charles of Macedon had such a problem that he had a much smaller army than the other side. He presented a drill of his army. The other side was so frightened by the well-differentiated exercise and show of force that it simply retreated. I'm not going to talk about who behaved how now, because I'm not responsible for that. I am in the government. The police attacked us. There was an escalation by some people who did not participate in the protest at all. Here, too, it cannot be said that the farmers 
farmers were attacking the police. On the contrary, the police were pulling people out of the street who were peacefully demonstrating. Meanwhile, the ruling coalition is apparently not hearing the Polish farmers no to the European Green Deal and the import of Ukrainian agricultural products into the European Union. On Thursday, the European Parliament's Trade Committee extended duty-free trade with Ukraine until June 2025. Representatives of the ruling coalition voted in favor. Konrad Chmiała, TV Republika. On Thursday, March 7th, the Washington Post reported that U.S. congressmen on the House of Representatives Oversight Committee have launched an investigation into the activities of SpaceX, owned by billionaire Elon Musk. The commission is to investigate reports of the company's potential acquisition of equipment by the Russian military. The company's so-called Starlink, developed by the company, allows users to connect to the Internet via a satellite communications system. Starlink terminals are used, for example, by the Ukrainian army, for which they have been purchased, including by the U.S. and Polish governments. However, in February, there were reports of potential use of the devices by Russian forces. SpaceX founder Elon Musk has strongly denied these reports. A number of false news reports claim that SpaceX is selling Starlink terminals to Russia. This is categorically false. To the best of our knowledge, no Starlinks have been sold directly or indirectly to Russia. On Thursday, congressmen published a letter saying that the Russian use of SpaceX poses a serious threat to the security of Ukraine, the lives of Ukrainians, and U.S. national security, and calls into question the effectiveness of the company's safeguards and compliance with U.S. sanctions and export control rules. Neither SpaceX authorities nor Elon Musk have so far commented on the letter. The United Arab Emirates experienced severe weather on Friday night, March 8th, and Saturday, March 9th, with heavy rain and thunderstorms hitting parts of the country. Dubai faced disruptions in transportation, with as many as 13 flights coming into the city diverted to nearby airports. In Abu Dhabi, lightning storms were observed overnight, accompanied by heavy rainfall. Torrential rain was also reported south of the Emirate of Al Ain, leading to road closures and disruptions. Authorities across the United Arab Emirates issued warnings urging people to stay indoors, avoid beaches, and to drive cautiously. The National Center of Meteorology warned of continued unstable weather conditions, with heavy showers and thunderstorms forecasted throughout the weekend. Final preparations are underway for the 96th Academy Awards Gala, which will take place tomorrow in Hollywood. As you can see behind me, the red carpet is almost ready. The decorations are still being set up and the countdown to Sunday continues. The most important film award in the world is given by the members of the American Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, which consists of about 10,000 people. Polish actress Joanna Kurik has joined this group. This year the decorations, curtains and drapes are in gold and champagne colors, and the red carpet once again is in classic Hollywood colors. Oscar statuettes have already appeared at the Dolby Cinema, where celebrities will be photographed. The gala will once again be hosted by well-known comedian Jimmy Kimmel, who will host the Oscars for the fourth time. The gala has its foreign and local fans. Some have come here from very far away. Tourists are not even bothered by the increased traffic caused by the closure of Hollywood Boulevard. For many Los Angeles residents, the Oscars are an annual attraction. Los From Los Angeles, for TV Republika, Małgorzata Schulz.